Hi, this is Gary with DeWitt Inspections. Today I want to talk to you about a house I inspected a while back. While there's a whole lot of deferred maintenance items in this house, today I want to focus on just the moisture issues. This house was inherited by my client and she wanted to know what it would take to fix it. So I did a complete home inspection. But right now we're just going to talk about the stuff that relates to moisture and then in the end I'm going to tell you what she had to do to repair the house. This is a piece of window trim that was applied over the top of the stucco. The problem with this is that the stucco tends to absorb moisture, rainwater, and so on, and it soaks right into the back of the wood and deteriorates it. You can see here that it's been warped and twisted right off the building. Here's another place where the trim is severely damaged and there's even a hole through the stucco. I'm not sure if this was seismic or moisture damage to the stucco but there were some holes in the roof that were causing internal damage to the structure. Here's another view. If you look closely at this one, you can see the gap between the wood and the stucco. This kind of a gap allows rainwater to get in there and start deteriorating the wood from the back side out. So it's a good idea to keep these areas caulked. Here's another place where some patching has been attempted, but as you can see, it's not going to really do any good in the long run. Here's the back side of the house. As you can see, it's long past any time it should have been painted and the wood's starting to deteriorate. This next area at the bottom of that same wall is kind of interesting because the water's getting to the wood in a different way. It wicks up from the ground and moistens the concrete. The concrete is like a sponge, absorbs the water, and then the wood just sits against it and, and deteriorates. This is why siding is supposed to be kept up off of the foundations and the surrounding hardscape. Here's a spot where the paint and maybe even some of the stucco is blistering right off the wall. Long-term exposure to moisture will start with the paint and then it'll actually start delaminating the stucco. These next two pictures have more to do with the roof and the connection between the roof and the walls. This is a spot where roof and wall meet and there's a tremendous amount of water that comes pouring down this when it rains. So there's supposed to be a little piece of flashing at the corner of the roof and the wall to kick the water out away from the wall and that was never installed. So you get this huge hole in the wall. Here's another place where the flashing's been done incorrectly. That piece comes up from underneath the shingles and that part's okay but there's supposed to be another piece called counter flash and it goes over the top of it and the top edge of that is supposed to be in a slot in the bricks and so this would prevent the rain from getting behind that metal and deteriorating the interior. There were actually stains on the ceiling inside this area of the house. Here's the other side of that chimney. The flashing detail looks good. It's got a cricket there in the middle of the back to divert water around the chimney problem with it is it was severely damaged in an earthquake and partially taken down and then nothing was done to seal it up as far as water intrusion so it makes like a large pool that can collect rainwater and dump that on the inside of the house. These next two pictures are taken from the attic looking up at the underside of the roof. This kind of staining is difficult to diagnose. We really don't have any idea when these stains occurred. So if they aren't wet at the time of the inspection, if it hasn't rained for a long time, all we can do is note that they're there. But typically, you know, it's from an earlier leak in the roof. These next three pictures are the ceiling of the garage. And it's really hard to tell exactly what's going on here. There's a bathroom and a bedroom above this. So it's hard to tell if it was a leak in the bathroom or if it was a leak coming all the way from the roof of the bedroom. The only way to tell is to start tearing off drywall, which is beyond the scope of any home inspection. Here's a door that's delaminating. What's happening here is the door is missing a little lip that goes across that um, diverts the rain out away from the door. So the water goes down the face of the door, wraps underneath, soaks up from the bottom, and deteriorates it. Here's another problem with an exterior door. What's going on here is that the outside area is the lowest spot on the patio, so rainwater collects there. Then it seeps underneath the threshold, gets the tile inside wet, and then that just starts to show stains over a long period of time. 
These two photos depict uh, peeling paint, maybe peeling plaster, in an inside wall of an upstairs bedroom. So there was probably a leak in the roof, dripped down through the attic, maybe down along the wall between the two rooms and blistered the paint. Always a sign of moisture intrusion unless it's from condensation. Here's another example of water damage to a wall. You can see it on both sides of the toilet. Then if you go around the other side of the wall into the kitchen, around this clean-out, you can see that the plaster is being deteriorated. It's almost falling off the walls. What I suspect happened is that even though it's two stories up, that this clean-out is connected to the vertical stack that runs through the roof. And the flashing has failed at the roof level. So water has followed the pipe down inside the wall and deteriorated the plaster on both sides. Here we have a hardwood floor laid over a concrete slab foundation and the hardwood is just buckling up from moisture damage. What's happened is either a lot of water has gotten underneath the slab from the backyard and has soaked through the concrete or more likely a supply or drain line has started leaking and the concrete just absorbs the moisture and transfers it to the wood and the wood expands from the moisture and just basically tears itself up from the floor. This is a tile shower original to the house and apparently the base or the wall of the shower has cracked and started leaking and over a very long period of time the moisture has gone through the wall and wrecked the plaster and it just becomes very obvious. The same sort of thing is going on around this tub probably from a leak in the doors so these are very common places to find moisture problems, even on newer houses. These two windows have pretty much the same problem with different results. They're both leaking moisture, but the uh, first one has wood damage uh, just from the moisture itself. And the second one, what we're seeing is evidence of insect uh, activity. Insects are attracted to softer, wet wood. It's just easier for them to chew up. So when I see this, I always also look for moisture damage. This is the water heater flue. There's evidence of moisture intrusion around it and then there's more evidence on top of the water heater. So I suspect it's a similar problem to the pipe you see in the kitchen and the bathroom downstairs where there's maybe a bad flashing or roofing problem at the, to at the roof and it's just allowing moisture to come in and deteriorate the materials over a long period of time. So I saved the worst for last. This is an example of either water intrusion from the inside or the outside. It's really not clear which. You have a shower with a window built into it. So either over a long period of time the water got in from the inside or the window leaked from the outside. It, it doesn't really matter which. You have the outside wall and the inside wall falling apart. The tile fell off. Part of the tile was replaced with plywood and plastic sheeting as a last ditch effort to keep this shower useful. This is a completely different building but I wanted to show you just how extensive the damage can get inside the walls where this has been going on. We had to actually replace the window, the framing, the exterior stucco, the whole thing in order to repair this. So this is why I don't like to estimate the extent of damage just from a visual inspection. I just can't tell. So here's what they had to do to fix the house. This is what it looked like when most of the outdoors work was done. They had to put on a new roof. They capped off the chimney and made it waterproof. New stucco. They patched the holes where they had to and I think put a new color coat everywhere. Complete new trim. New windows everywhere. All new plasterboard on the inside. New flooring everywhere. Also, aside from the moisture issues, they had to put in new plumbing, heating, and electric. The cost was over $400,000. But the house sold after that for around $895,000. So I think it was worth it, but it was a lot of work. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions or you need an inspection, just give me a call.